Yo, what is going on guys, and welcome back to another Borderlands video. I know this video is quite a long time after my last Borderlands video, but to be honest, I've been distracted playing Lost Ark, that's really it. But I did not want to leave you guys hanging, or anyone that might have been looking forward to other Borderlands builds, so here it is. My original plan was to make a Amara-style video for all of the Vault Hunters, in the game. However, I quickly realized that while I was doing that, I was trying really hard to put multiple builds together to find different builds online that were very good endgame viable builds and all these different things that were fun to play and different enough because even though the Amara builds feel pretty different to me in terms of playstyle, honestly they are all very very samey, there's just slight differences and I quickly realized that for almost every one of the characters in the game there is a build that is just objectively better than every single other build and honestly it felt like a chore completing in-game content using the other builds in comparison it just wasn't as good so i'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm not going to bullshit you guys and for some of these builds we're not reinventing the wheel here i'm simply presenting them to you in their perfected form in 2023 with the new update just coming out i feel like it's perfect a lot of people might be picking up the game for the first time so this is the current best in slot meta builds for all of the vault hunters in bl3 I'm going to start by talking about Amara because I'm going to go over this very, very quickly. I already made an entire video dedicated to her and multiple different viable builds for Amara because I think she's the exception. But if you ask me, the build that I think is the most versatile by far is her quote unquote gun build or her blade fury build, which is the second build that I showed in my Amara video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well as a little title card in the top right hand side of the screen for you to click on if you haven't seen that one yet. This is the skill tree in case you guys just want to go ahead and quickly screenshot it or pause the video to copy it over. There you go, you have it on screen. Now let's quickly go over your gear. You're going to be using the Blade Fury or the Face Puncher, both with a kill stack anoint as your main mobbing weapon. These weapons can also do bossing, but there are way better options. The reason you want kill stack is because both of these guns have a very small magazine size and you have a lot of rate of fire, so you're going to be burning through those mags quite quickly. So the reload speed increase is actually very, very nice. Now for long range enemies, or if you don't have any kill skills active at the moment, you're going to have a kick charger. This is especially useful for Valkyries at the Malinois takedown. For bosses, you're going to have a guardian angel that you're going to hold in your hands while you throw your fish slap grenade. Fish slap parts don't have to be perfect, but they do increase your damage quite a bit. Just make sure that you get one in each element before you perfect part farm any of these. Also, you can use an ASC anointment, but for bossing, which is their main use, the grenade thrown anointment is much, much better. So that's what I recommend that you run. Not that you need any more damage for mobbing. For your shield, you're going to use a revolter shield. Try to get this on a low level character so that you can crack it easily with your driver class mod. When you use driver, you're going to break your own shield and this is going to activate the revolter buff without having to use the action skill start anointment, which allows you to use an ASC. ASCs I recommend on your revolter are cryo or radiation since those are pretty globally useful. For your artifact, you're going to want a Firestone Static Charge, however, this can be any element as long as it's a Static Charge, it could be a Corrosive Stone Static Charge, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're using different elements so that you have all your bases covered. The stats you're going to want on this are Magazine Size to help with the Face Puncher and Blade Fury, Melee Damage, and Area of Effect Damage. You can also roll Action Skill Cooldown Rate or Grenade Damage if you would like to. Or bossing, you're going to swap over to Unleash the Dragon. This is going to give you that insane dot damage that's going to one-shot basically everything. Wotan, Hemavorous, Scourge, Anathema, Seer, anyone. They're just going to simply die to this dot damage as long as you're holding the Guardian Angel in your hands. Now, for really tanky bosses like Hemavorous and Seer, I recommend swapping this Guardian Angel for a Guardian Angel that has a face slam melee damage increase anointment and swapping your class action skill to Fracture. And this is going to allow you to proc that super powerful anointment, which is going to allow you to basically one shot any boss. So the only times, like I said, that I would honestly bother because you do enough damage as is to do this is for Hemavorous and Seer. Now let's move on to Zane, which is probably the most broken character in this entire game. The build that we're going to go for Zane is going to be an Hustler Eraser build. This build uses the combination of the Hustler class mod, which gives you a chance to just 
crit on something that cannot crit, and the interaction with the eraser skill node, which is all the way down here in your purple tree. This is the screenshot of the skill tree in case you guys once again want to just screenshot it or just pause the video and copy it. Your main weapon for mobbing and bossing as well, to be honest, is going to be the creamer. You're basically never going to have to swap off of this weapon. It is just absolutely insane with this uh, combination of perks and everything going on. The other option that you have for weapons is going to be the Sandhawk. Now, this is honestly just for your clone. Your clone can shoot this and not kill himself. If you give him a rocket launcher, he's probably going to insta-kill himself. So this lets him do a lot of damage. This does deal splash damage, even though it cannot roll splash damage anointments. So this is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. If you don't like the Creamer, or if you are up against something that has decent elemental, uh, weaknesses, then I do have Globetrotters as well as Plague Bearers here. Those are honestly the only two launchers that I enjoy using. Maybe the Yellow Kick as well. Yeah, I do have a Yellow Kick in here as well. But other than that, I don't really like too many launchers. Maybe the Backburner would be nice, but I personally just don't prefer it over the Plague Bearer. The annoyance that you're going to want on the Creamer or any of your launchers is going to be ASC Splash Damage. For your shield, you're going to want an Infernal Wish. Now, for your grenade, it doesn't matter. You just want a grenade that has the Terrified Damage and Fire Rate Anointment. And your shield, you want the ASC Apply Terror Anointment. So with this, you're going to be able to get Max Terror by spamming Mantis Cannon. And then this is going to give you extra Fire Rate and Damage. This is 35% damage, so it is just objectively better than on Grenade Throne. Plus, it's also very difficult to proc on Grenade Throne. If you don't want to go through all of that, you can also use ASC Cryo damage or radiation damage or any element really i just like having cryo in this case because there are some things that zane synergizes pretty well with for your class mod obviously you're just going to want the hustler with as much splash damage and weapon mag size as possible you want to have the creamer be at three ammo if you don't have a three magazine this is going to be a single shot reload which is very very no bueno and it's horrible for ammo efficiency and then for your artifact you're going to have a hulking toboggan this combined with the infernal wish is going to give you an absolutely ludicrous amount of damage on that initial shot so just make sure you slide and then shoot and you'll be good to go another important artifact that you need to have is a cut purse launch pad this is important because you are running around using rockets like crazy so you might run into ammo issues without a vending machine nearby so this is going to allow you to refresh your ammo stock. The gameplay for this is quite literally exactly as it says. You just slide and shoot, slide and shoot, slide and shoot, and you just hope and pray for eraser procs. It honestly, whenever it does proc, it just kills absolutely everything, and I mean absolutely everything, including Hemovorus. Now let's move on to Flak, and Flak probably has the most accessible, easiest build to get, and is arguably one of the more powerful builds. So this is Melee Flak, aka Rackstab, which was made originally by Quag. I've made some slight modifications, but overall this is pretty much the build every Flak player runs if they are trying to do quick runs or just playing the meta, because it is absolutely insane. There are basically three components to this build. A Guardian Angel, or a Psycho Stabber as a stat stick, a Stinger Shield with an Action Skill Start Anointment, and the Fish Lap. Basically, the way this works is you run around with a Guardian Angel, or again, if you don't have the DLC, you can just use the Psycho Stabber. This will give your Fish Laps an increased amount of damage, of course. However, whenever you activate your action skill, your Stinger Shield is going to proc its Melee Nova. This Nova scales off of AoE and it scales off of Melee Multipliers. So, you're going to do a lot of damage with this thing. You're going to one-shot basically every single mob in the game with this shield. And for anything that survives or bosses, you just throw a grenade at them. That is literally all you do. You just run around like a crackhead in a Walmart parking lot popping your bats and throwing them at people. Here is the skill tree for those of you that want to take a quick screenshot or just pause the video to copy it. The rest of the gear is pretty much irrelevant because you're literally never going to use it. I recommend having a fist puncher for whenever you go down because you will end up downing yourself quite a lot by throwing fish slaps randomly and also by using the peregrine class mod. So have a face puncher since you are scaling mainly off of melee damage to help you get yourself back up or any other second uh, wind weapon works well here. A kick charger even or a plasma coil or a kipsworth, all of them work fine. 
For your class mod, you do have a few options, but the one I recommend the most is going to be the Peregrine. This is going to cause your racks to drop a fish slap whenever they hit an enemy. With that being said, you want to prioritize splash damage radius. You want to make that Stinger Nova as large as possible so you can kill as many enemies as possible. But honestly, just getting this effect is enough, and you don't even need to run Peregrine, to be honest. You can run Rack Commander to get an extra charge on your rack attacks, or you can even run Cosmic Stalker since this is just Hunt skill power. This is great as well. So you don't even need to run this class mod if you have a good rolled uh, Cosmic Stalker, which is like an old as of vanilla drop, then you can just use that as well. For your artifact, I am using a Snowdrift Static Charge. Snowdrift is here for the movement only because we don't really have a driver comp class mod like Amara does, so we don't really have a lot of move speed from our skill tree. So this is basically our only source of movement, and it's more than enough, it's fine. But the important bit is the Static Charge, because again, we want to chain that lightning damage off of our Fish Lamps as well as our Stinger Novas very very important but for bosses you're going to want to swap to and unleash the dragon because again you want that ludicrous dot damage for bosses now lastly we have mose now mose is actually a character that has two insanely viable end game builds and i'm going to be going over both of them as quickly as i can while covering all the important bits the first one that i actually want to go over is an iron bear focused mose build because this one actually shocks me at how unbelievably brain dead it is it clears through all end game content completely effortlessly it's super safe you literally just cannot go wrong with this build. You can use any weapon in the entire game as long as it has the Iron Bear Railgun Damage Anointment on it because that is the weapon that we're going to be using. Speaking of Iron Bear weapons, this is the skill tree. Take a look at it, pause the video, do whatever you need so you can copy it, take a screenshot of it, DM it to yourself on Discord or WhatsApp if you're of the Asian Persuasion or Mexican Nation, and let's move on. So for the gear, like I said, the guns that you use literally do not matter at all. You're not going to be shooting them. However, I still recommend that you use either a Boogeyman or a Dark Army, as these weapons have effects that persist while you are an Iron Bear. This is extremely min-max. You do not need this at all. But if you want to, I mean, this is a perfect build. Okay, so I have to show you the perfect gear. So yeah, either Boogeyman or a Dark Army, that is about it. For a quickly let me get back into Iron Bear weapon, I recommend the Plague Bearer. You can use the cooldown reduction anointments, but honestly, I don't really need it. You have a lot of cooldown reduction already. The increased splash damage is nice because you'll be able to just kill adds while you're waiting for your Iron Bear to come back, which shouldn't be more than five seconds at a time, realistically. And the last weapon I recommend is something to get yourself back up off the floor. So something like a Plasma Coil or an Ember's Purge or a Kick Charger all work well here. This is simply a second wind weapon. For your shield, I recommend getting a plus ultra with as many health rolls as you possibly can because your Iron Bear scales off of your max health. So the more health you have, the tankier he will be, and he gets obscenely tanky. This is not necessary at all, but it is the best in slot for this build. The anointment I recommend on this is the kills increase Iron Bear cooldown reduction rate. This is pretty much going to guarantee that you get your Iron Bear back after you shoot one Plague Bearer shot. For your grenade, it doesn't really matter. You can have any grenade that you want, you can have a Mesmer, you can have a Piss, you can have a Hex, but make sure that you have the while Iron Bear is active, taking damage as a 20% chance to spawn a grenade anointment. This is going to allow you to make use of grenade damage proc effects even when you're inside of Iron Bear. And I have a radiation grenade so that, you know, we get the little radiation aura for just better ad clear. Now, for your class mod, you have a lot of options that you can go, the main ones being Flare and Eternal Flame. Now, Flare is mainly for bossing, and Eternal Flame is for just mobbing. However, I've never struggled to do either with either class mod. So if you want to do bossing with Eternal Flame, you will find no problem with it. And if you want to do mobbing with Flare, you will again find no problem with it. The rolls on this thing don't really matter too much, but I do recommend trying to get splash damage, action skill damage, and max health, since those are the things that are going to scale in your side of your Iron Bear. 
Now for your artifacts, I recommend using an electric banjo, and this is going to give a shock damage, which again, does benefit the railguns when we're in Iron Bear, it gives us electrocute chance, and this also has a chance to link to enemies as well, which is really, really nice, and that actually works inside of Iron Bear. Not many things work inside of Iron Bear, so this is actually very good. And you might think to yourself, well, what am I going to do about shock immune enemies if I'm using railgun? Well, lucky for you, whenever you crit, Iron Bear ignites enemies, and that ignition damage is actually quite high. So even against these heavies that are immune to shock damage, you will see that if I just headshot them, they simply die. So highly, highly recommend this build. It is super easy, and it requires the least amount of gear. You literally don't need any equipment for this. You literally do not need any equipment for this. The equipment just makes it a little bit better. And now, finally, we're going to get into the last build of the day, and this is a throwback slash an updated version of my old Doomsday Mose build. This build just focuses on doing max amounts of splash damage and staying alive with the Bloodletter and Deathless Calm configuration. There's a couple of different ways to set this up, but this is my personal favorite. This is the skill tree for those of you that want to pause the video and watch it, screenshot it, do whatever it is that you got to do. There you go. Now going into the gear, my main weapon is going to be a Plague Bearer or a Hive. If there is no problem with corrosive damage, then I recommend using a Hive. It's much, much easier to use. However, it is a lot of delayed back-ended damage, which is something that not a lot of people uh, like or, you know, get used to very easily. But honestly, you do one run, you kind of get it. You kind of learn it, and it's super easy to use after that. But the classic is still the Plague Bearer. This thing, you should have it in every element so that you can go into any type of content. I also have some backburners here, which are very similar, as well as kick chargers. But back Plague Bearers, backburners, kick chargers, all of them work fine, as well as the Hive. The Hive can also come in radiation, so this is pretty universal. It is very, very good. The anointment that you're going to want on all of these weapons is going to be while under 50% health, deal 100% bonus radiation damage because you're always going to be below 50% health, so you're always going to deal 100% bonus radiation damage. There are a lot of other builds out there that do different things. The reason I prefer this is because one, it is an additional projectile, two, it is radiation damage, so it's actually pretty good for add clear. Three, this also works while you're in fight for your life, so you don't necessarily need a fight for your life. Uh, weapon and four it is unconditional you don't need to do anything to proc this you don't have to worry about iron bearer summoning or any random ass crap like that it, you don't have to stack it up like kill stack or consecutive hits and also it is an additional damage type so for example if i'm shooting an electric rocket at an enemy that is immune to electricity consecutive hits kill stack ac all of those things i would still be doing shock damage but because this is radiation damage i'm stacking so much damage that i can outright kill a shot immune enemy with just the radiation portion of the damage so even though some people might say that 150 90 is better because you'll one shot everything i'm not gonna lie you're gonna be one shotting most things anyway without that anointment so the extra 50 percent damage is nice but the alternative is to just shoot again, you know, so shooting twice isn't really that big of a deal against a boss, that's really where that is going to become very apparent, but this is my recommendation, it has too many pros and not many cons compared to everything else, which is mainly just conditional. That is, the, the, the key word here is that they are all conditional, and this is basically unconditional. Even if you didn't run Deathless, if you ran something like a Toboggan, if you ran this skill tree, you're still going to be under 50% uh, health, you're going to be at 40% health. So you can still make use of this anointment, even when you're not running Deathless, because I know some people just don't like seeing their health at 1 HP, it makes them a little squirmy. So this is still going to be the best thing that you can do. For the rest of your gear, I already mentioned the uh, Deathless, the stats you're going to want on this is going to be heavy damage, magazine size, and area of effect damage. If you get area of effect damage in the third or second roll, you're going to get an increase to area of effect size as well, so keep that in mind. I also have this as a snowdrift because again, it's our main source of mobility, we don't really have any other mobility. But you can roll anything else that you want here as well. 
Now for our class mod, I am using a Bloodletter com, and this is what's going to give us a ridiculous amount of survivability and shields. The con to this build is that you cannot health gate, so you will one-shot yourself quite often, and you might get one-shotted all the time as well. So having a lot of shields is also very important, as well as being able to heal your shields from basically all damage. For your shield, you're going to want an Infernal Wish. Now, this is going to take down your shield as well, as well as the amp parts. You're going to drain a percentage of your shields. But that's why I have the Iron Bearer Exit 75% increased shield anointment to kind of mitigate that a little bit, give you a little bit of a buffer when you need it, or just to simply give yourself more shields after you shoot your first shot. And for your grenade, we have the good old cloning maddening tracker. Now you don't need to have a level 72 version of this. Any version of the grenade will work. We're simply using it to proc our skill tree like vampire and all that stuff. So you're basically just going to be throwing this to reload and put rockets into your rocket launcher. So you don't have to reload as often as well as heal yourself. This is post editing Yoda here, and I just want to make a quick note about playing Launcher Mose. You definitely want to have this green node here from your Guardian rank disabled when you play her. What this does is automatically reload all of your weapons whenever you enter Fight for Your Life. Now, as a Mose, with this build, you're going to be spamming rocket launchers, and the way that you sustain your ammo is by utilizing means of destruction to regenerate your magazine. However, because you're always at 1 HP, you are not going to be able to health gate, as I said previously. Now, this means that you are going to accidentally kill yourself every so often, or you're just randomly going to get one shot. It happens. It's fine. You have more than enough damage to get yourself back up instantly, pretty much. However, if you do ever go down and you're missing ammo in your rocket launcher, that node is going to directly put ammo back into it, and that is going to drain from your reserves, and you cannot refill your reserves. You can only refill ammo directly into your mag. So, you know, with that perk on, you might accidentally go through all of your ammo. So I highly suggest just having that off, because usually you can just wait on splash damage or just spam grenades until you refill some back up in your mag, and then you don't ever really have to reload uh, with Moe's. So just a big tip to have there, because this can and has cucked me in the past. And well, guys, those are the builds for all the Vault Hunters. These are objectively the best. Okay, I don't want to hear from anybody else. These are perfected, perfect gear, perfect skill trees, all these sorts of things. They cover almost everything. You can do any content with them. Malawan takedown, Guardian takedown, Hemovorous, Seer, anything in the game. You can clear with these builds the fastest, okay? So have fun, and thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.